presentation of the National Football League on NFL Network. Welcome to Thursday Night Football presented by Bud Light Platinum and welcome to the official start of week number three. It's one and one meeting two and oh the Houston Texans hosting the Carolina Panthers. And now welcome inside the broadcast booth everybody. I'm Joe Buck. That's the Hall of Famer Troy Aikman. We talk about the Carolina Panthers second year for head coach Matt Rule. He was known for turning programs around in college did it at Temple did it at Baylor and now he's doing it with the Carolina Panthers. Yeah and pretty much the same blueprint. They struggle year one year two they get to about average and then year three they're off and running. But here in year two for the Carolina Panthers playing some really good football. It was a big win that they had on Sunday against a division rival a team they hadn't beat the last couple of years this is a confident group and it's a talented group they've invested a lot of draft capital on the defensive side of the ball and that unit is playing outstanding now they've got a quarterback who's regained some confidence looking forward to seeing what he can do tonight well there's been a lot of roster turnover with the home team the Houston Texans and here they are now playing tonight behind a rookie quarterback we're going to see how they get along I'm anxious to see how Houston plays this game tonight yeah I am too I, I think coming into the year there, there was so much that took place within this organization during the offseason expectations weren't very high but they came out they had a nice win week one they took Cleveland to the wire up till halftime when they lost their quarterback Tyrod Taylor and now it's time for Davis Mills has not played a lot of football he's a really talented guy I talked to him before the game pretty relaxed he's looking forward to his first NFL start and like you I'm excited to see what he can do for more on the young guy let's go down to the field and Christina Pink well yeah Joe all eyes on the rookie quarterback making his very first NFL start so you'd expect some nerves maybe some emotions but you don't seem to get that from Davis Mills and his teammates still get Getting used to it. Brandon Cooks told me, you know, it's funny. He's so even killed when you get in the game. In those situations, you just don't know if he's nervous because he's the same day in and day out. That's what you expect from your quarterback. And as Troy mentioned, Mills looked very relaxed before the game, but Cooks made it a point to tell him this week, this is your huddle. You take command of it, and the rest of us will follow. Now over to Aaron Andrews and the Panthers. Well, now let's see how relaxed Davis Mills looks against this Carolina defense who ranks first in nearly every major category. Of course, it's two games, but Coach is saying it's a real testament to how much this team has bought into their vision. And when I spoke to veterans like Hassan Reddick, he said this has happened a lot quicker than he imagined when he signed here. But he told me we're a team that works hard, and this group did a good job sprinkling in veterans with young players, and we're playing with some big energy. Joe, that big energy is something Reddick said they're going to throw at Davis Mills all night long, as you can imagine. Yeah, he's going to have his hands full. There's no doubt about that. The Texans won the toss. They defer. Carolina gets the ball to start a Thursday night. And they will start on offense at the 25. And that means Sam Darnold, who was the number three overall pick by the Jets in 2018, will head to work. The numbers are good. And for the first time Sam Darnold is on a 2 and 0 team in the NFL. Yeah it feels good too. You know when you get off to a start like that to begin your new time within a new city and you can tell the difference in watching him. He just seems a lot more poised in the pocket. We'll get into it during the ball game. But what Joe Brady and Matt Rule have done with him and just allowing him to settle in and get comfortable within this offense has been good to see. Start with a throw out to his left and he starts with a completion to D.J. Moore as they pick up seven. We'll look at the lineups for this offensive group. Joe Brady by the way the offensive coordinator turning 32 today he has had a fast rise <laughs> and uh, he's a guy who's earmarked for a head coaching spot at some point here in the near future. Yeah, it sure is he interviewed for some jobs this offseason just think about it five years ago he was a graduate assistant at Penn State and now he's interviewing for head coaching opportunities. You remember when you were 32. No not really. Here's a pass over the middle broken up the tight end Dan Arnold was the target and Eric Murray 
the starting strong safety was there to make the play. Yeah, not a good decision here by Sam Darnold. You're going to get a lot of the split safety looks because that's what defensive coordinator Lovey Smith likes to show. That's their base. And that's what they presented. But Dan Arnold, who I really like, he's a, a tight end that they brought in that can stretch the field. But the safeties never really got off the hash. It was not the coverage that Darnold thought. And he tried squeezing it in. Brings up third down and three. Texans playing without a really good safety. Justin Reed out with a knee injury. Inactive. Pass is broken up. A lot of contact, and Matt Rule is furious. Vernon Hargraves is out there defending D.J. Moore, and it's fourth down. Yeah, Vernon Hargraves out there. It looked oh. like a, definitely a grab on D.J. Moore. That left hand, I, I agree. Right over there on Carolina sidelines, they had a chance to look at it up close. Hargraves definitely gets away with one early. So three and out as Joseph Charlton will punt it with Andre Roberts waiting deep. High hanging punt, not very long, not very good. We'll see where they mark it. Good starting field position at their own 36 for Houston. And here comes the kid. The clock has been sped up for young Davis Mills. Third round pick, which was the first pick by new GM Nick Casario. Yeah, their first pick, and, and for a guy in the third round, when you're out there looking for quarterbacks, I thought it was a really good selection. There's a lot of people who felt that had he have gone back to Stanford for another year, he could have possibly been a first-round talent. He has that kind of ability. They toss to Cooks with the tight end, Farrell Brown, out in front, trying to deliver a block, doesn't get much, and Dante Jackson is there for the stop after after a gain of six. You know, when Davis Mills, when he was coming out of high school, he played high school ball in Atlanta, Georgia. He was the number one prospect going off to college. Could have gone anywhere he wanted, and he chose Stanford. He had a knee injury his senior year that carried into his early years in Stanford, but just has not played a lot of football. Just 11 starts. Drop it off to Ingram, and that's well played by Thompson. Jack Thompson, who is one of the best linebackers in the game, is up to make that stop in a loss of two. Well, this guy's unbelievable, the way that he flies around the football. Here he is right in the middle, and he just beats everybody to the football. He diagnoses it, reads it, and you see that Titus Howard is trying to get out there and make a block on him. He just beats him to the punch. This defense, that's why the first play of the game to, to Brandon Cooks works so well. It is a fast flying defensive group and trying to use that speed against them this time Shaq Thompson gets there this one's batted down play made by Burns well they've added Hassan Reddick they have Shaq Thompson who made that play and now Brian Burns who's so good rushing the passer bats that away and it's three and out here Brian Burns what a great start he is off to this year along with Hassan Red really this entire defense and Brian Burns man when he gets it cranked up he is a load for anybody trying to block him they're going to have to give help but he he reads it and he makes a play and so both offenses come out three and outs Johnston to punt and over end with Erickson on the return from inside the 10 doesn't get much Chris Moore just up from the practice squad makes the tackle and we'll take our first break on a Thursday night in Houston. There's the 66 year old first time head coach after 27 years as an assistant absolutely beloved on any staff he's been on finally getting a shot. Well I can see why too we had a chance to visit with him the other day and, and what a gentleman he is. Good to see guys who have invested so much time in our game get the shot. A lot like Vic Fangio after having been an assistant coach for so many years in our game. Caffrey touches the ball for the first time and a nice start to this possession. He gets nine. Got a good block from the fullback Giovanni Ricci. As you look at 
former assistants who finally got a shot to be a head man. Fangio, 32 seasons. Dick LeBeau, David Cully, Romeo Cronell. And we're going to get into some quotes by guys like Andy Reid and John Harbaugh about who and what David Cully's all about as we get through this ball game. I think the Texans are in good hands with him. Handoff here. And close to first down yardage is McCaffrey. As Zach Cunningham made that stop, he's going to be a little bit short. You know, the big thing, though, with, with David Cauley compared to those other guys that we put up there was he had never been a coordinator. Yeah, the others had been. So for him, you know, he had never even interviewed for a job as a head coach. So the one time he interviews was for the Houston Texans, and he gets the, he gets the job, and, you know, what an undertaking he has. You know, with all that has transpired within this organization since he got the job. Ready? Darnold is going to take it and get it. Well, here are some of those quotes. You go to Andy Reid, great person, very loyal, will bring positive energy to the building. No doubt about that. John Harbaugh, he'll be who he is every day, has been that guy every day of his career, genuine, full of energy. And then the other way, David Culley to John Harbaugh, you were the last guy I'm going to work for as an assistant coach. He said he was happy doing what he was doing, but that's going to be it. And been. he got the shot, and here he is. Yeah, he's been with great programs. Like you said, 18 years with Andy Reid. He was with the Buffalo Bills, and then, of course, the Baltimore Ravens. Here's McCaffrey on a screen, and a nice play made by Joe Thomas, who gets the start with the injury to Camus Grugier Hill. A gain of just one. Well, I mentioned Lovey Smith, and he takes over as the defensive coordinator, and this is quite a reclamation project that that he has on his hands a defense that especially when it comes to run defense historically bad they just could not stop anybody they couldn't take the ball away and they couldn't get off the field on third downs and so it, it's early but they they they've improved they got a long way to go but they have shown some improvement and it's good to have Lovey Smith back in our in our league. Second and nine Darnold. Decent protection and now out to his left. Pass incomplete for more. Bring up third down and nine. And we talk about that two deep shell that Lovey Smith likes to run. Look how deep these safeties are and how wide they are. And Dan Arnold's going to take the middle. Now we saw him try to force it earlier, but you're not going to get more open than that right down the middle of the field. And I don't know if Sam just didn't see it or because of that first possession was a little nervous of trying to force it in there but that was as open as open can get third down and nine Darnold out to his right finds more. And into Houston territory as he takes it across the 50, picks up 28. And D.J. Moore, who was overlooked and underrated, a true number one receiver with a big catch on third and nine. Well, Houston's just fortunate that D.J. Moore didn't keep going up the field because he ran his square in route. You're going to see he gets behind. They totally blow coverage. There's nobody on him. But had he have gone up the sidelines, there's only a middle safety. There's nobody left on the field. But really excellent play by Sam Darnold being able to create some space with his legs and then deliver a ball that Moore could catch. Darnold. Pass is caught. That's the rookie Marshall. And Terrace, the second round pick from LSU, gets 12. Well, I worked the draft the year that Sam Darnold came into the league and he was my number one guy of that group Baker Mayfield he went number one Saquon Barkley two and then Sam Darnold three with the New York Jets and what he did in college is what we're seeing there and that's what he was best at in fact I thought he was best when he was was throwing on the move we saw it when he picked up more for the big play a moment ago but coming to his left and the accuracy that he has on the move. Here's the rookie Chuba Hubbard over 
trying the left side Cunningham forces him out after a gain of three as we look at the career and the numbers with the Jets and the numbers after two whole games with the Carolina Panthers much better but as you've said a couple of times it's early it is early and what plagued him in New York is what plagued him his last year in college when he was a turnover machine and just had way too many of those said he felt like he was trying to do too much and I can understand that it happens when you're struggling you're not winning games it's just natural to do that and that's what they've tried to get him to just calm down relax just play quarterback and not feel like he has to carry the team pass over the middle there's more weaving his way down to the six. D.J. Moore is going to have a big year if he stays healthy and if Darnold does as well. That's his favorite target. Good for 25. Well, again, these safeties play so deep. They guard against the big play, but then that opens up all this field in the middle, and that's where D.J. Moore gets to. You can just see how open that is with the linebackers. They're not getting their proper depth. The safeties are out of the play. They're not even a factor in trying to cover D.J. Moore in some of those intermediate throws. Tenth play of this possession for the Panthers. Darnold's going to keep and get it into the end zone for the touchdown. All eyes to McCaffrey. And Sam Darnold takes it in, his second rushing touchdown of the year. Pretty good design here. He's going to keep and he comes around. And he's got a lead blocker, Dan Arnold, out in front. And the only guy that he's reading on that is Jacob Martin, the end. And he collapses, and that gives Sam Darnold the key to keep it. And then he's got a lead blocker out in front. Second of the season, seventh of the career for the 24 year old Sam Darnold. Extra points is good. And the look on the face of the 24-year-old is good. A smile, we didn't see that a lot with the Jets. Up seven. Thursday night football is only on NFL Network. Trevor Lawrence and the Jaguars. Joe Burrow and the Bengals. We're here for a battle between number one picks. Thursday night football, next Thursday at 8, only on NFL Network. We're all here for football. Welcome to the party, my friends. Why stop now? We're talking about those epic matchups. Unbelievable. It's man against man. And instant classics. He caught it with one second left. This is going to live forever. We're here for the Thursday night throwdowns. Touchdown, Chargers win it. It doesn't get much better. Sunday morning breakdowns. He's going to add to his legacy. And all the inside lowdown. I got to just play hard, game in and game out. Oh, have some of that. <laughs> they are the most interesting team in the AFC. Your team. With the first pick. It's going to be fun to watch these young, talented quarterbacks. There is no <laughs> ceiling for this young man. Our team. This is such an exciting time for a fan. What we got was pretty good. I'm loving this. Every team is different than anybody we've ever seen before. If it happens in this league, we're all here for it. It's on. Oh, are you kidding me? Caught in the end zone. Incredible. NFL Network. We're here for football. We're here for that NFL red zone feeling. Buckle up, ladies and gentlemen. That can't look away. Inside the 20, my fantasy team needs this feeling. Wow. That give me two games at once. No, eight games at once. Can't miss a moment feeling. Touchdown, Dallas. That biggest season ever. 18 weeks of every touchdown from every game, every Sunday afternoon feeling. Could this be a miracle? Come on, Murray Magic. Get a free preview of NFL red zone, Sunday, September 26th. Remember when no dream was too big and you could fearlessly face the unknown? You still can. When you have a rock you can depend on for life, you'll be unstoppable. Like the millions of people who rely on Prudential for financial planning and investing. Who's your rock? Welcome back to Thursday Night Football presented by Bud Light Platinum. The Carolina Panthers are the only team in the NFL to not trail at the start of this 2021 season. They've outscored the opponents 40 to nothing in the first half. 
Riding that good defense and on that last possession riding the right arm and the legs of Sam Darnold. Let's send it down to Christina Pink. Hey Joe well very good to see Tyrod Taylor here on the sideline with Davis Mills getting his first career start. Tyrod dealing with a left hamstring injury still optimistic that he should be back in about three weeks is on injured reserve right now. But I said to him look you've got the worst luck of anybody you certainly understand some of the frustration but he said no I'm good. He's very involved in all the quarterback meetings this week. So uh, good to see him here on the sideline guys. Yeah, no doubt. Out. Here's Ingram on first down getting six and what Christina was referencing for Tyrod three of the last four years he's been injured then replaced by a rookie and has not gotten the job back at least the first two times traded to Cleveland Bills drafted Josh Allen you know the rest of that took over week three in that game against the Jets while with Cleveland Baker Mayfield. He's had that job ever since and now here he is as Ingram carries for a first down but a flag is down on that second and four play. Here's Alex Kemp. Offside. Defense number 53. That penalty is declined. First down. Well, that's on Brian Burns. He's going to press the line, and, and this time they get him. Yeah, you know, Tyrod Taylor, I, I agree with what Christina said. I mean, he has. He's had some really unfortunate luck, you know, and a guy who everybody seems to really enjoy playing, and he had off, gotten off to a, a good start, was playing well against Cleveland, 14-14 tie at halftime. They were big underdogs. He was doing a lot of good things. Unfortunate with the injury. Flag down is Ingram. Runs into middle linebacker Jermaine Carter, a gain of four. We'll hear from Mr. Kemp again. Holding. Offense number 85. Ten yard penalty. First down. It's against the tight end Farrell Brown. Well, now they're backing up, and, and you've got Tim Kelly. You think back to last year. Tim Kelly was the offensive coordinator. This is his third year, and a little bit of a Surprise I guess you could say that David Culley there's a look at Tim Kelly and his brother Dennis is actually an offensive lineman for the Packers but his third year and at a time that we're an organization when they're trying to rid themselves of anything associated with Bill O'Brien he stays and there's a good throw on the move to Cooks that's a really good shot by him but to finish up that what David Cauley said was that he really liked what this offense did last year throwing the football and they threw it well. And they actually ran the ball better than what they get credit for. They just threw it so well that they really didn't put much of an emphasis on it. Of course they had Deshaun Watson as their quarterback. So Cauley comes in likes what they did in the passing game but told him we want to focus more on the running game and take some of the pressure off the quarterback and so that's what they've done through two games. Pass is high but caught. First catch as a Texan for Anthony Miller, a gain of four. Well, right now we're looking at third down, and we'll see how Tim Kelly is going to try to protect this young quarterback because Carolina on third down has just gotten after quarterbacks. They have really been something, and it just it has not just been their edge rushers with Brian Burns and Hassan Reddick. Morgan Fox another key acquisition this year. He's coming off the heck of a game against the Saints. Here's Mills out to his right. He's not going to get it not even get close as Morgan Fox made that play and a third down stop by this red hot Carolina defense. Well I thought they might keep somebody in to give one of those tackles some help but they don't and you see how quickly they got up the field. Here they come. And he's able to step up inside was clean and he just not able to find anybody if he if he's looking down the field he probably is able to get that ball off and pick up that first down but not trying to force it and I'm sure he's been told the last three days a punt is OK. Fair catch hauled in by Alex Erickson after a 44 yard punt by Cameron Johnston back to work Darnold. Panthers up seven. The record's not good, but the needle is pointed up. You're ready. 
Five and 11 a year ago, off to a 2 0 start. They lead by seven. Good play out on the edge made by Tremont Smith after the pass was caught by DJ Moore. You know, Matt Rule reminds me a lot of the guy who coached me when I came in as a rookie, and that's Jimmy Johnson. And they've developed quite a relationship this past offseason. They spent some time together. If you go to Isla Morada, you either go to talk to Jimmy Johnson or you go to fish. And if you're going to see Jimmy, you're going to get to do both. And that's exactly. <laughs> what Matt Rule and his son got to do and he like Jimmy is involved in every aspect of the organization he delegates but Rule has coached just about every position on this field and so he has a good understanding he knows what kind of players he wants but he spent a lot of time with Jimmy talking about how he manipulated the draft and they did a good job I think in assembling some talent here over the last couple of years here's a nice first down completion to DJ Moore. A gain of 13. DJ Moore, one of those guys who was already here when Rule took over. But last year they spent all of their picks on the defensive side of the ball. This year their first round pick, J.C. Horn, also on that side. And we're seeing the benefits now from those investments on that side. And I really think this is a team that if Sam Darnold can continue to improve like we have seen already early, this is a team that could give everybody all they want in the years ahead. McCaffrey. That's well played by Houston. Malik Collins first got to get through. And Grenard made that stop a loss of two. Well, what we're seeing right now, Joe Brady last week, I thought called a masterful game against the New Orleans Saints. And some of the things that he did in helping out that offensive line, and they went to two backs, and they did two tight ends. That's a look at the birthday boy there. But the weakness of this defense is they're really thin at wide receiver. And I don't think the approach trying to pack everybody in and running the football is the best way to go after them. Right now they've got them spread out. They're going to make them cover. Second and 13 flag on the play. Anderson spins out of one tackle but is brought down by Desmond King a gain of three. Well, there was a flag in the secondary. It usually is a while the quarterback had the ball in the pocket illegal contact defense number twenty three five yard penalty automatic first down. You know we saw that picture of Matt rule with Jimmy Johnson down in Florida that's reminds me of back in the day when Johnny Carson was hosting the Tonight Show the comedian did a good set and Carson liked him. He invited him over to the couch after the set. That was <laughs> like right. that was like the yeah. move that hey you done good. Yeah. If Jimmy has you in town and you stay at the big chill and meet him at his restaurant. Yeah. Then then you didn't get to go to the couch. The couch <laughs> is is his boat. <laughs> that means hey we'll talk a little bit. That's right. But you're not coming over. Yeah. I don't want you on my boat. <laughs> Show me a good set and then we'll talk. It's pretty incredible the number of coaches and GMs that go in and visit him and hey Matt rule said that he learned more in the few hours that he was out on the boat with Jimmy that he ever could have learned if, if he had read five books you know I mean in fact he thought so much of it that he sent his new GM Scott Fitterer and Dan Morgan back to spend some time with Jimmy. <laughs> It's like hey can you guys leave me alone for a minute. <laughs> I'm trying. Yeah I'm trying. To, there's a reason why I'm out here on this island. <laughs> I, I want to be alone. McCaffrey good for four. And that's the end of the first quarter. Seven to nothing. The Panthers on top trying to get to three and oh. For the first time since 2015. Thursday night football presented by Bud Light Platinum back after this. Well I think that's the definition of getting off to a fast start no points allowed the plus 40 point differential in the first half and Darnold has the most passing yards in the first half across the NFL. That makes halftime fun. Makes playing quarterback a lot of fun too. <laughs> Just keep doing it. Second and six. Great protection Darnold McCaffrey. Breaks one tackle and has a first down for Carolina. They'd love to limit the touches for McCaffrey. McCaffrey doesn't want that, but he's averaging just under 30 touches per game. 
Pretty good concept here by Joe Brady. They run Robbie Anderson through the middle. The backside corner falls off of it, gets underneath it. But when he does, all of a sudden then, you've got D.J. Moore sitting in the hole. And Darnold just just got off it a little bit. That's that's one of the, the things that they've worked with him on is just going through. It's a progressional read offense. Deep to Robbie, come back underneath to D.J. Moore. Here's McCaffrey now. Wow, nice strong run. Wow. I'll throw a wow in there too. He gets I don't know, nine and a half on but, that carry. Joe, I went down on the field in pregame warmups. First time since 2019 that I've been down on the field, by the way. And I couldn't believe, I mean, Christian McCaffrey has never been a tall guy. I mean, people say he's little. He's not little. He's never been little, but he's had some time. He only played three games last year. So he's been rehabbing for quite a while, almost a year. His legs, they, I mean, we are in Houston. I, I, they were similar to Earl Campbell. I mean, these things are huge, and he's moving the piles. Second time Darnold's done just that, picking up a first down. Pretty impressive. You know, you talk about they, they just have not eased him in, and he wants it all. He just wants to keep staying on the field and getting carries and getting touches and he's he's close to 30 carries or 30 touches I should say a game here through the first two weeks only played three games last year you know that doesn't sit well he didn't miss anything prior to last year but Sam Darnold has just marveled at the dedication that Christian McCaffrey has to his craft play action here from Darnold Throws across the field as he moves to his left incomplete. Second down. Aaron, give us more on McCaffrey. Dan Arnold had a great uh, comment or quote about Christian McCaffrey, saying the hardest thing to do when you're playing with this guy is you kind of want to look back and, and see what, it, what he's doing. He's making people miss. He's doing crazy things. And then you realize, yeah, I probably shouldn't. I need to look right ahead and help him make that run. <laughs> he's a special player. I mean, he is... The, it's not a surprise he's as gifted as he is and he's as good as he is with the amount of time and as regimented he is in his approach and his training. Certainly makes the play action pass work and there's more. And DJ able to spin down inside the 15. Now these defensive backs so we keep talking about it. Just look how deep everybody is and how much space that D.J. Moore's afforded. I mean, there's just nothing in that 18 to 20 yard area with the safeties and corners playing so deep and then the linebackers hugging up. There's a lot of space in this defense and there has been. There was last week as well. Cleveland was able to take advantage of it and Carolina's taking advantage of it tonight. D.J. Moore, I, I think, thought he was still live on that play that he was never down took it into the end zone but they ruled him down here's McCaffrey a little stutter step not much well and the other part of this for Lovey Smith they they were thin already coming into the year they, they traded Bradley Roby to the New Orleans Saints and now they're without their starting corner Terrence Mitchell tonight and so Trayvon Smith who has only had one career Smith or one career start he is in the lineup tonight and that's why I say that spreading these guys out Carolina has the weapons to go after them if they turn Sam Darnold loose and they're giving him good protection in the pocket. Twelfth play of this drive Darnold Hubbard can't make the catch. Brings up third down, third and eight. Well, this was an area of the field. They were better last week. They were two for three in the red zone against New Orleans, but week one against the Jets, just one for four. You know, if you start nitpicking on some of the areas where, where they need to be a little bit better. And that four across zone look, so they should have something in the middle of the field. Let's see who this is against. Blacklock came across. 
False start. Offense number 65. Five yard penalty. Still third down. They get Dennis Daly. Much to the surprise of Matt Rule. Uh, Dennis Daly, he's making the, uh, I don't know. Dennis Daly, he's making the start at left guard. He started at right guard week one, and that was due to John Miller. He was out because of COVID protocol. Well, they're backed up, and, you know, this is where Sam maybe, you know, when he was with the Jets, would maybe think he has to do too much. But right here, there's a tendency sometimes for a quarterback trying to pick up that first down, you start forcing throws. But Houston's got to play tighter coverage. Darnold fires, pass caught. Short of first down yardage is Arnold. That previous call should have gone the other way. Checked in with Mike Pereira. He agreed. It's going to be fourth down, fourth and one here. Yeah, that coverage, that coverage is soft. I, I would go for it from here. And they are. Christian McCaffrey is in the medical tent, by the way, I'm told. Here's Hubbard, Chuba Hubbard. Did he get it? Doesn't look like it. And a big stop by this Texans defense. Well, he got across the line and he got across. He had to, you see where the marker is. It, it's awfully close. Oh, yeah, nothing there. Nothing there to suggest that he got enough. I don't know that there's going to be a shot. It's right there is where it looked like maybe he might have been able to get to it. I think that down the line shot looks like he's short. So Matt Rule goes for it on fourth and one, and Houston makes a stop on defense. Says tomorrow at seven on NFL Network. Well, we welcome you back. The ball is sitting at the five. The defense for the Texans made the stop on fourth and one, but there's bigger news to give you, and we'll do it after this play as Davis Mills takes over. Kind of an odd start in the pass off the right hand of Chris Conley. Penalty flag on the play. We'll get the call from Alex Kemp and then check in with Aaron. Offside. Defense number 98 was lined up in the neutral zone. Five yard penalty. Still first down. Aaron Andrews, it's all yours. Well, the news coming from Carolina's blue tent, not good. And you'll see it right here. Christian McCaffrey, guys, is out of this game with a hamstring injury. Just awful news considering we heard from Joe Brady two weeks ago saying Christian McCaffrey's ready to be Christian McCaffrey. He missed 13 games last year with many injuries. Hate to see this. Yeah, no doubt. Here's Ingram, and Ingram is able to push that pile about a half yard short of a first down. Yeah, earlier on that previous play Mark Ingram comes up he he makes a block on Shaq Thompson but it, it, the pressure gets back into Davis Mills's face that's why the throw was errant but he hit his hand. We'll keep an eye on that. Philip Lindsay former Denver Bronco checks in on second and one. Gets it on the handoff picks up the first down. A good tough running there by Philip Lindsay. You know, you look at this offense and talked about how David Cauley wanted them to run the football more than what they did a year ago. And they went out and they got some running backs. They got Mark Ingram, they got Philip Lindsay, they got Rex Burkhead, and they also got David Johnson. They've got guys who can create some problems, not just running the football, but also can create some matchup issues. So you go with the multiple backs, you got tight ends. You know some different things that you try to create then the matchups in your favor and they're able to do that handoff to Lindsay and he is swallowed up by Derek Brown a loss of one Sunday on NFL game day morning everything you need to know for week three's biggest matchups and Travis Kelsey breaks down film with Hall of Famer Tony Gonzalez NFL game day morning Sunday at nine live on NFL Network.
Good play there by Derek Brown. Well the best thing the offense has done so far on this drive is that they got the ball off the five yard line. You know and now second down can they, can they pick up enough here to make this a manageable third if they don't get the first but Davis Mills is going to have to call a timeout play clock at one. So they take it and we'll be right back after this message from Best Buy. The NFL's back. Don't spend this season on the sidelines. Bring the game home with a new big screen TV from Best Buy. Catch every play in stunning big screen detail from brands like Samsung, LG, and Sony. Plus, we'll drop off and install with plenty of time for kickoff. Well, no comparison with what the two offenses have been able to do or not do so far. But just seven points on the board. Second down and 11. Flag on the play. Ingram gets a couple. Offside. Defense number 53 was lined up in the neutral zone. Five yard penalty. Still second down. That's his second or third penalty on Brian Burns. Just simply where he's lining up. It's the third time Carolina has been called for offside with his defense and you're right second time on Burns. It makes it a little easier on the rookie second and six. Jack Thompson gets picked up the pass incomplete and a flag on the play. Back in the area where Mills went down as he and Miller couldn't connect. That was a great job Personal by foul, roughing the passer. Defense number 94. 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. Davion Nixon guilty of the personal foul. Well, great job by Ingram coming up and, and making a, a big time block. But you're right, they they're able to get Nixon then with the penalty. Right at the end of this going down low and then on the back end Anthony Miller he, he's been practicing but he's been inactive the first two weeks and he was trying to get a penalty himself but he looked totally confused on where he was expecting the ball to be thrown to him. Lindsay gets a yard. I mean the only offense we've seen for the Texans so far is penalties on the defense. We've seen enough penalties already. Well, Phil Snow, though, the defensive coordinator, he's in his second year calling the shots for Carolina, and he, he definitely is bringing a little heat on the rookie. Here's Lindsey, left side. I mean, at some point, you, you got to keep him honest, don't you, and then try something to loosen up this defense, a loss of two. We got 35 yards of offense. <laughs> well, I, I know they're trying to protect the guy. Chris Conley, the wide receiver, he's out there, and I think these guys, both these teams, the wide receivers, do a pretty decent job of blocking on the perimeter. But Chris Conley, he he, he threw a whiff on that one, and Lindsey just had nowhere to run. Brings up third down and 11. And a four man rush. They're just playing soft coverage. These officials are getting excited with these All penalties. <laughs> Offense number 68, five yard penalty, third down. That's against the center, Justin Britt, who we've seen for years out in Seattle, first year with Houston. First year with Houston, out of football last year. Injured his knee in 2019. He spent all of last year rehabbing that. And he was talking about how great it felt after week one to be sore again. He had missed playing. He had some good years in Seattle. Davis Mills has started three for four for 14 yards. Handoff here to Johnson. And 
David David Johnson gets seven so fourth down here and a punt coming up. Well I, I'm not I'm OK with that call by Tim Kelly. I'm not, I might be the only one in the stadium the, the fans the fans are letting them know they don't like it but you know third and long against this group now I was a little surprised I, I thought maybe Phil Snow would would bring the bring a little pressure on him but just play the field position game and you know you're down seven points and rather than a quarterback trying to pick up the first down third and long a lot of bad things can happen line drive punt on the return it's Erickson had a little room and takes it up near the 28 48 yard punt 13 yard return back to work Darnold Night group Bledsoe was hit by Jets linebacker Mo Lewis Bledsoe concussed Suffered a collapsed lung and turtle bleeding. Tom Brady replaced Bledsoe in the game and for the rest of the season and the rest of time until we're all long gone, he will remain a starting quarterback in the National Football League. Well, that's right. And and meanwhile, Drew Bledsoe bought another winery. That's so right. He's, he's, so he's laughing all the way to the bank <laughs> and Brady later that year. <laughs> A winner in Super Bowl 36 against the St. Louis Rams. First of seven Super Bowl wins. Darnold has it knocked away. Ball is out. And it stays with Carolina. Grenard forced the fumble. As he came around the edge and Darnold didn't feel him. No, he didn't feel him at all. And you've got Tommy Tremble who's back there. And he's trying to pick him up. And he's unable to do it. He comes across and they're fortunate they were able to get this ball back. But it sure looked like Darnold you know, had, a, had a chance early in that progression to get the ball out. But Bernard, he gets home. That's, uh, they're going to have to rely on this defense with the, the young rookie playing at quarterback. Darnold gets rid of it this time and it's knocked away from Arnold. Pass is incomplete. Third down and 15. Listening to the broadcast last week and uh, the great Chris Myers, he he was he he loved saying Darnold to Arnold. He, he just loved how that sounded. And uh, they they were able to complete those passes last week, though. But it reminds me of like Marv Alberts. <laughs> <laughs> Darnold, Arnold, yes. <laughs> Third down and 15. Arnold drops it off underneath, and the rookie Hubbard is able to crawl for a few extra yards. Got seven, but that first play set the tone for that possession. Yeah, it sure did. And this gets this gets a little interesting with Christian McCaffrey out of the lineup and. You know the defense being able to get some things going and, and I mean trust me when you're game planning on a short week for a guy like Christian McCaffrey and all the things that he can do and all of a sudden you take him out of the game. Uh, we saw the difference that that made and how this defense was able to just pin their ears back and come after him without some of the same type of threats. Second three and out of the game for Carolina's offense. Flag is down ball is out. And recovered by Andre Roberts. He muffed it yeah, he that muffed, last week. Yeah, he muffed it last week, and, and it gave Cleveland the short field and the first points of the, of the game. There's a flag down at the beginning of the play. Luvu punched that out. And the call is against Carolina. Ineligible downfield, kicking team number 49. That five yard penalty will be added to the end of the kick. First down, Houston. Well, the big news in a seven to nothing game with four minutes left in the half is this a hamstring injury for Christian McCaffrey. And this play by Grenard set up the second three and out by Carolina as they lead by seven. What rain? Laundry day. Welcome back to Thursday Night Football presented by Bud Light Platinum. 
Another possession for Davis Mills. Texans three possessions, three first downs, three punts. Hand off to Lindsey, and he gets popped by Chin. No gain. About 20 minutes ago, Christian McCaffrey went into that blue medical tent. About five minutes ago, he laid down in that tent. And now he's out. So he was in that tent that whole time. He was ruled out of this game right away. But he's been in that tent ever since. Blitz coming against the rookie. And they get home. Brian Burns adds another. And no answer for these guys coming off the edge as McCaffrey comes off the playing field. Well, they bring three to the weak side, but Justin Britt, the center, I don't know if the quarterback Mills has to redirect him or if he's able to do it, but they had, they should be, you know, if, if Britt works to the left, they've got three blockers for three defenders, but uh, not good. Saw Burns say it, sack number three on the air. Mills. Completes short one to Burkhead. A gain of just five to bring up fourth down. Really good job by this defense. They get him into third and long, pressure him on second down, and they're able to get home. Nowhere to go on first down when Chin comes up and makes a play and a three and out. So right now, the way that it's worked, you know, we saw the one drive by Carolina, but you know, both teams really dependent right now on their defense. Beautiful punt. Erickson with a fair catch near his 25. With 2.12 and now 2.08 left in the half. 45 yard punt, no return. Well, we heard Aaron Andrews talk about this defense and, and their number one ranking. And yes, it is only two weeks. But if the second half goes like this first half, they're going to look like the 85 Bears when this thing's over because they've got 44 yards of offense, is all Houston has. So this. <laughs> This is uh, hey I was on some teams my rookie year we uh, that would have been a big day for us. <laughs> and yet they still go visit Jimmy Johnson down on the boat. I'm <laughs> How about that. <laughs> Darnold. Anderson dropped it tried to make a move before he made the catch. Darnold to Anderson just doesn't have quite the same ring. No, not even close. <laughs> we know a lot of Darnold to Moore. First 10 attempts by Sam Darnold, seven targets for DJ Moore. That guy's really something. I saw him when he came into the league, was at their OTAs, and you know, he was more advanced than a lot of these young receivers that come into the game. They 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 really don't have an understanding of running routes. They haven't run that many routes. Usually three or four is all they have. But DJ Moore was a little more advanced and he's only gotten better. Darnold steps into it pass caught and about a yard and a half short of the first down is Royce Freeman. Gain of eight third down when we come back McCaffrey heads in to get looked at. We're at Texas. And the Texans trying to make another stop here on third down, third and a couple. Darnold is set. Whitney Merciless was there, not alone. Omenahu there as well. It's fourth down. Well right up the gut Matt Paredes he's the center and he, Darnold immediately gets pressure right up in his face and he just is not able to do anything about it. That's Blacklock coming right up the middle. That's a great job. It's exactly what Houston needed to do there on third and short. I mean they're allowing for an offense that has yet to even convert on a third down. They're giving they're giving this this team a chance at least timeout taken by the Texans time to bring the game home presented by Best Buy 
And we go back to that fourth and one stop. A little while ago at the end of that possession when McCaffrey went out with a hamstring, a handoff to Chuba Hubbard, and he didn't get it. Yeah, a couple big stops now. Obviously, that keeps points off the board, and and for them now to to make another stop, you know, maybe maybe they can get a return here and give the ball back to their offense with some position. And a great looking punt here and a fair catch called for by Roberts after it left the right foot of Charlton just a 37 yard punt good field position at their own 30 home or motorcycle insurance visit progressive.com Texans have one timeout they trail by seven and they're looking for any semblance of ball movement here in this yeah. first half they have yet to cross midfield. Well, they only need about 25 yards. Joey Sly, their kicker. I mean, he's got a big time leg. If they can get to the 40, I mean, that's that's within his range. Pass is caught by Cooks, and the young quarterback Mills got blasted. They got blasted because the All-Pro left tackle Laramie Tunsil just got turned around. I mean, what a move, Hassan Reddick. Mills hops right back up, second down. Passes to Cooks, wide open, found a hole, and is able to roll out of bounds to stop the clock with a minute 12 left after a gain of 30. Well, they go two deep coverage. They're able to get a receiver out in the flat, gets the corner to hug up, and it leaves that vo void within that zone defense. You got protection there, too. He's able to set up in the pocket and throw with a confidence. Johnson on the handoff, stumbling the moment he got it, he is able to pick up four. You see Brandon Cooks, he's on that seven route, and then they run a receiver to the flat to tie up the corner. Just leaves a big hole for Davis Mills to lay it. Second and six, pass is caught by the tight end, Akins. And Davis Mills showing what he can do, good for 10. Yeah, I think they heard you up here. <laughs> they clock it. One time out in their pocket. They give up a down with 36 seconds left. Let's watch the uh, mechanics, the throwing motion of Davis Mills. Well, he throws it good. I mean, he does throw a good ball. I think watching him. He is pretty calm and composed within the pocket. I think he's got good anticipation. And what we saw of that throw to Cooks is what I think is his strength, his ability to just lay the ball. So he has, because of his anticipation, he's able to just lay it, which receivers like. He just got to have time in the pocket. Quick throw, Cooks. Down near the two. And timeout is taken by Houston, their final timeout of the half. This kid is starting to heat up. Yeah, he's starting to heat up, and, and he's throwing it to the right guy. I mean, anytime Brandon Cooks has the ball in his hands, good things are going to happen. It's amazing to me that for a guy who I've been high on since he went to New Orleans as a rookie and all that he's been able to do, and yet he just keeps getting traded. And he hasn't really stuck anywhere for very long, but everywhere he's been, He's been highly productive. He can play the long game if you want. He can play the possession game and underneath as well. There's really no, no part of his game that he can't do, and right now he's in the slot. First down and goal. Mills throws, pass caught, touchdown, Miller. Now we got action. <laughs> we got action, all right. It's a great job by Davis Mills. You watch him as he goes through his progression. I mean, pretty good, pretty composed down here in the red zone where things happen pretty quickly. He got off. He, it's number two. Anthony Miller is his second read within that scheme and play, and he finds him, and they just blew the coverage. Miller was wide open. Extra point is pushed wide right. 
by the former Panther Joey Sly. And it's a 7 6 game with 25 seconds left. There's Anthony Miller, number three. They got three guys running to the flat and just a complete bust in the secondary. But, but boy, that was, there were was a lot of good throws right there by the rookie, Davis Mills. And that's got to excite his family. They're here. What a moment that is. Put that ball away, tuck it away somewhere. His first NFL touchdown of his career. And David Cauley's hoping there's a whole lot more of those. And then the extra point is missed. Well, they're in limbo with Deshaun Watson. Both sides, Deshaun Watson and the team have agreed that he will not play for the Texans this season. All that's gone on with Deshaun Watson, he is not on the commissioner's exempt list. The NFL has not suspended him. Facing multiple investigations, 25 civil lawsuits for inappropriate behavior, sexual assault, massage therapist, charges that he's denied. And so there he sits. And then the question is, well, where does he end up? Nobody really knows what the future is for him because of the legal issues. So what liability do you incur if you make the deal? Are they going to get three first round picks for him? Right. But his time in Houston yeah. finished. That's what I was going to say. What we do know is that he's he's done in Houston. So hey this is an opportunity now for Davis Mills and uh, that was <laughs> that was one drive and a half that hadn't been very good. But he does know that this is an opportunity for him. Darnold pass is caught by Hubbard. And Hubbard is up to the 35 as he gets 10. Timeout is taken by Carolina after the Panthers just allowed the first points they've allowed in the first half on the young season. With NFL Game Pass, you can catch every snap from every game with full game replays. I watch a condensed game in 45 minutes. Go to NFL.com slash Game Pass to start your free trial today. I'll tell you, though, it's pretty demoralizing for Carolina. You control the first half like you did. You're up seven points is all. And then, you know, it, it, this took a drive, but that's the danger. It's just one play, and all of a sudden the team is, you know, right in it. And, you know, they are going to go in at halftime. Now, they've got two timeouts, so they, they can work the whole field. But... They're going to go at halftime and say, man, what the heck has happened? Carolina looking for more before the half ball is out. Blacklock knocked it out, and we'll see who comes away with it. It stays with Carolina. A second time this has happened here. Yeah, it's a couple times now the ball's come out with Darnold and, and he just got a little bit careless. I mean, once once you have to move in the pocket and move up, you can't just sit there and think you still have time. You got You got to go or the ball's got to come out. Cameron Irving, the big left tackle, was there to recover the fumble and avoid trailing potentially at the half. 7-6 game. Carolina on top. Stay tuned. Lexus halftime report comes up next. Want more stats? Just ask Siri. Who leads the league in tackles? moment there in the first half. Caroline welcome back. I'm Joe Buck. That's Troy Aikman. <laughs> Carolina was up uh, seven to nothing. They had fourth and one. They were trying to do the little put away there going for it down on the five. Houston makes a stop and then we saw what the rookie could do there at the end of the half and we're going to get to see him right at the start of the second half. Well and I think that's the key. I, I like what we've seen of Davis Mills. Now they really haven't opened things up. I mean they've packed everything in. They've tried to run the football. Haven't had a lot of success doing that. Try to then pick it, pick it up on third down. Unfortunately, they've been in a lot of third and longs. But 
when they got to the hurry up and they spread them out, then all of a sudden they started protecting a little bit better and he had places to go with the football. We'll see what Tim Kelly, the offensive coordinator for the Texans, is going to do. But I think you open up this half, spread them out again, and kind of attack Carolina in that same manner. Here's a return by Roberts, and there's just no room. Send it down to Aaron Andrews. And that's exactly what Matt Rule told me coming out of the half. He said for his defense, he's very interested to see what Houston does here. He said they ran the ball the whole time. And then, like you guys mentioned, they spread him out. He started throwing the ball, and he said they're having success. But he said we got to stick to our game plan. The obvious question, with that game plan offensively, how does it change without Christian McCaffrey? He said, we've got to ride Chuba Hubbard, Royce Freeman. We're going to continue to run the ball, but obviously our passing plays without Christian aren't there. He said, we've got to also take care of these penalties. Very uncharacteristic for his team. Play action to start, and there's nothing there as they try and set up a screen. I don't This was going to be a tight end screen. Pressure by Daquan Jones on that play. Well, Brian Burns was all over it. Yeah, just not so everything's been played with you know within the line of scrimmage in, in the first half I you know I what I said is spread them out I still stick to that but if you're not going to I think you go play action you take some shots down the field I mean you just I'm not talking about just deep shots start throwing post routes but I'm talking about working the intermediate stuff and get the defensive backs off of your receivers here they come again quick throw pass is caught and we'll see where they mark him looks to be enough for a first down Anthony Miller. And let's send it down to Christina Pink. Well, hey, Joe. Yes, young Davis Mills certainly looked great in that last drive at the end of the half. David Cully told me, look, when we started this game, we just wanted to keep him upright. He settled in, and so we opened things up for him. But he said we also did that because we were in our two-minute offense. We still want to see some more consistency on the ground game. He said our defense has been tremendous, but more consistency in the run game. But he started the first, the second half here pretty well, guys. Yeah, and they bring in an extra offensive lineman here with Justin McCray. On first down and they do run it. Handoff here to Lindsay. Philip Lindsay is good for three. Well I do understand it. I mean there is a tendency when you're viewing this you start thinking about it more with you know not keeping in mind that this is Davis Mills's first start. So you, know, you try to strike that balance as to how you best approach it and yet not ask too much of him knowing that this is a defense that can totally turn this game on one play. Pass to the tight end. That's Aikens breaks a tackle and makes it third down and short as he gets up to the 35, a gain of five. Well, pretty, yeah, pretty tough five yards there. That was all Aikens picking that up. So now a third down. They went through a stretch there where they just were unable to convert and they didn't have a third down on that drive when they when they scored the touchdown. So they have still yet to convert on third down but they haven't seen many like this. Oh for four so far. They roll the rookie to his right pass is complete that's Miller and Anthony Miller has a Texans first down up near the 40. That's Game good of six. Yeah good strong catch by Anthony Miller they run the man beater so they push off on the outside to help create separation just by the design of the play by Ant for Anthony Miller the ball's a little bit behind came out a little bit late but making the catch knowing that he was getting ready to get hit it was a good job by him in his first action of the year. Pass is incomplete looking for Conley. Second and ten. There was contact. I was I was expecting to see a flag with all the contact from from J.C. Horn on Conley. I think that time though, I think Mills got a little locked in pre-snap and determined that's where he was going with the ball. I couldn't tell who it was, but he had an underneath crosser that was. Left uncovered. Ingram carries. Play made by Shaq Thompson. Back wearing his college number when Shaq was at Washington. 
he did everything. Played safety, played a little linebacker, played receiver, played professional baseball for one year that didn't go so well. But this guy is a tremendous athlete. Really good. And now he finally got out from underneath the shadows of Luke Keekley and Thomas Davis. And he still got some good running mates next to him. I mean, they were the, one of the fastest trio of linebackers when when they were with him. And now even with the other two that he's got with him now. Third down and eight. Good pocket pass too high. Flag on the play. Coverage uh, by Dante Jackson on Cooks. Yeah, I don't think I like that call. It, 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 it there was contact, but I, I think this is falls into the category of an uncatchable ball. The, the the ball was never going anywhere near Cooks. Pass interference. Defense number 26. The ball is placed at the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. Houston. And a player is down for Carolina. That's Justin Burris the safety and Matt rule has been wearing out the officials really from the start but the pass interference makes it first down for Houston at the Carolina 45 back after this. Well first down after the penalty the injury they send Justin Burris to the medical tent. The late handoff here to Lindsay making moves and a good tackle in the open field by the rookie Horn. That's a great tackle by J.C. Horn. I mean, really good. For him to come up against a guy like Philip Lindsay in the open field, a cover corner like him, rookie. I mean, that's uh, that's impressive stuff. When the least, Panthers made that trade, they did not want to give up that number eight pick. When they made the trade for Sam Darnold, they were in love with J.C. Horn, and you can see why. Flag on the play. Pass is incomplete. As Anthony Miller was met by Sam Franklin. Here's the call. Offside. Man. Defense number 93 was lined up in the neutral zone. Five-yard penalty. Second down. That's four times his defense has been called for offside. Yeah, and just lining up. Uh, they're just pushing the line to gain. That's J.C. Horn who's down. He was in on that collision downfield. But another free five yard. Next Thursday at 8, only on NFL Network. Welcome back to Thursday Night Football presented by Bud Light Platinum. J.C. Horn injured in getting looked at. Show it to you here in a moment. Sean Melvin who just came up from the practice squad is into the game now. Second and four. Play action. Going for it all downfield and the pass incomplete. Brandon Cooks the target and Dante Jackson was out there. For Carolina back to the injury with Horn. Yeah, right at the end of this and and you see how he gets twisted up and he's already been kind of nursing a, a back injury earlier in this game that was bothering him and boy nobody wants to see this. So I said it was back in that collision it was non contact but he was immediately pointing to his lower right leg. And obviously in a lot of pain third down and four here Carolina looking for a stop this one floated for Miller it's incomplete. Well right now we'll see what David Cauley is going to decide to do They're they're in Joey Sly's range. And this guy has a big leg is he going to let him try it and try to take the lead or. Go for it or just try to pooch punt it and pin Carolina back. They're going to send the punter Johnston out. And the play clock winds down. They don't really care if they are going to punt it if they get the penalty, which they just got for delay of game. Delay of game offense five yard penalty fourth down. Well I mean in a league 
and now in a year where more and more teams are just putting the pedal down and going for it on fourth down you could make a case to go for it there but with the rookie Davis Mills they decide to punt well for all those disciples of analytics uh, it says to go for it or did prior to the penalty and over end punt by Cameron Johnston fair catch by Alex Erickson and some frustration there for first year head coach David Cully they elect to punt it in them just a moment ago J.C. Horn was carted off the field so they'll give him a more thorough check back to work this Carolina offense working without Christian McCaffrey. Hand off to Hubbard and the rookie gets one. Time for tonight's next gen stats powered by AWS and we just simply put this out there with McCaffrey the yards per play and without he was injured with just over 12 minutes left in the half. Carolina has one first down since then. Quick set up and throw there's more and DJ's got forward progress for a first down. Zach Cunningham out there to make the stop. Well, we're seeing Houston play coverage. They're playing with two deep safeties and without Christian McCaffrey they're not able to run the football and they haven't taken advantage. I showed it earlier in this ball game when he when Sam Darnold tried forcing one to Dan Arnold but the middle of this field is open against this two deep look there's a lot of field in there if they can get somebody down the middle Hubbard right side brought down and what a play by Kirksey on his third team over the last couple of years he can play if he stays healthy and he just showed what he can do well it looked like Taylor Moten the right tackle they, they've had some blow ups up front in this offensive line but Moten blocks down he's got to move up and take on the linebacker there and help I mean you're just giving guys free runs on these running backs but that's two, two running plays in a row where the offensive line has blown a assignment and is not giving the running back any opportunity. Time runs out Darnold takes off and slides and he gets hit. He slid and then took a hit and the flags flew. That was Kirksey. Personal foul. Defense number 58. 15 yard penalty. First down Carolina. And a helmet to helmet on top of it. Yeah Christian Kirksey he, he's the leader. Tell call he's not happy about that at all. Nobody is. He's the leader of this unit. And you know those. That wasn't wasn't a very smart play. Brings the ball up to the 39 first down. Royce Freeman now in the backfield next to Darnold. Pass to Marshall incomplete. A lot of bodies out there and I think Carolina's just happy that ball hit the turf. Yeah no question and ever since Houston got the ball and Davis Mills takes him down and they come away with touchdown there to end this first half. The, the Texans are playing at a different pace right now than what Carolina is and, and they're dominating the line of scrimmage and they're they're playing on the on the Carolina side of the ball. Second down pass caught DJ Moore. Nice catch over the middle and 15 yards with a first down. 
Well, that's the area. They got Darnold going, or excuse me, Arnold going through the middle on the other side. And so you have a shot at him if you like it. And if not, the next guy is DJ Moore on the square end. So they're kind of going a high low. If you like the deep shot down the middle, take it. If you don't, it should clear things up for DJ Moore. They're able to make that, that completion. But th this cover two look, if he has time in the pocket, they should just be wearing that middle of the field out. Handoff here to Freeman. He's got room. Takes it down to the 32 as he picks up 13. And a player is down. That's Blacklock. We've had a lot of injuries in this ball game. Some good players going down. So now he gets checked out. That 13 yard carry by Freeman, the longest rush of the ball game for either team. Carolina starting to get it going again as they lead by La Vida Masfina. All right, first down for Carolina, leading by one. Darnold, second level, and the pass caught. Down inside the 10 and out of bounds is Erickson, who has his first catch, primarily a punt and kick returner, but there he is for 26. Yeah, and Hargraves, he lays out and just misses. He's probably wondering how he wasn't able to get his hands on the ball. I mean, he plays this awfully well, stretching out right there and just not able to get to it. And just a perfect throw by Sam Darnold with Erickson crossing the field. He had pressure in his face, too, so he had to get rid of it right away. That's a really good execution. Four completions for Darnold of 20-plus yards in this game. First and goal, handoff here for the touchdown to Tommy Tremble. The rookie from Notre Dame. And the third round pick able to carry it in. And Matt Rule gave us a little heads up that they had some plays in this week for the rookie, and that was one of them. Yeah, it sure was. And as long as you get this guy right here to sit tight and not get upfield immediately, you got a chance because then you got blockers on defenders and then it's a foot race to the corner Matt rule told us that after they selected tremble in the third round he got texts from executives all around the league saying we really like that kid he can do a little bit of everything and he just is able to carry in for the touchdown his first score in the NFL and a big smile for right here, right across the street from NRG Stadium. And well, there's my guy, Earl Campbell. That's where he dominated running back for the Oilers from 78 to 84. And we'll give you a little more on Earl. All right, we've seen the next gen. Now we'll do a little old school gen. <laughs> with the great Earl Campbell, yes, the force meter. He led with the crown of his helmet. Yeah, he impelled him. Uh, and we have the uh, JTI, that's the Jersey Tear Index, which is pretty much a 99 percenter. He was so fun to watch. I loved that team for some reason growing up. If you didn't like Earl Campbell, and love watching him run. I could watch highlights of him all day long. Just, Something's wrong with you. Just plowing through people or carrying them with him. Went into the Pro Football Hall of Fame in 91. Led the NFL in rushing yards three times. Rushing touchdown leader twice. Heisman Trophy winner and I don't know what it was about that team or that uniform or that red face mask back in the day or those tearaway jerseys. Oh, Bum Phillips. Yeah. You got Mojo running Mojo. out there getting the kickoff tee. Awesome. Here's Ingram. Well, hey, Joe, I mean, you look at this game and David Cauley, he had a chance on that last possession by Houston to kick a 57 yard field goal. And he elected to punt, and 
you know, hindsight's 2020, but Carolina gets that ball and takes it right down the field and comes away with a touchdown. So nice drive by Carolina putting something together. Either try the field goal or go for it. Yeah. Fourth down and short. And Mills is sacked. Brought down by multiple players. Morgan Fox is going to end up getting credit, but Frankie Louvu was through there early. Yeah, Frankie Louvu, he's the one, 49, who comes through, and, you know, Fox is able to finish him off, but he starts in the middle. And you see him scrape. He's just reading the quarterback, and once he starts to slide, here he comes. And Morgan Fox, I, I really, I really like what I've seen from him, even going back to last year. Had six sacks a year ago with the Rams. Here's the punt by Johnston. This kind of goes sideways as it's trying to get near the 36. Just a 44 yard punt, but a flag is down. Ineligible down the field, kicking team number 32. That five yard penalty would tack on to the end of the kick. First down, Carolina. Tomorrow night on NFL Network, a look at James Harrison's remarkable journey from undrafted to two time Super Bowl champion and defensive player of the year. A football life, James Harrison premieres tomorrow at nine, only on NFL Network. I saw that. I've seen the promos for that. I, I'm looking forward to watching it. I think it was Ben Roethlisberger that said scariest player he's ever seen. We did a production meeting with him. I mean, a great, great player. Hell, I was scared to ask a question. I mean, what an intimidating guy. Here's a handoff to Hubbard, and he really hasn't had much room. Able to push that pile forward for a couple. Four minutes left in quarter number three. Well, they were able on that last possession, like I said, to put something together and come away with come away with a touchdown. They got a chance to kind of open this thing up. I just don't think Houston's going to be able to sustain much, but it is a different looking offense without Christian McCaffrey. They lost McCaffrey on offense and J.C. Horn on defense. Flag down. Darnold is out. Plenty of room. Shows his speed. Out of bounds near the 25. The flag in the backfield. And everybody is moving back toward where it was snapped. Looks like a hold. Holding. Offense number 75. 10-yard penalty. Still second down. Cameron Irving, and that eliminates a 33-yard run by Darnold. And so Menahu, number 94, who was, you know, really screaming off the edge. They brought quite a bit of edge pressure there. Could have probably called either guy. They get Cam Irving, so Sam Donald just running for his life, picks up a nice gain, and it all comes back. But the onus right now is really on this Texans defense and in, in, in keeping it a one-possession game for their offense. Darnold underneath the Hubbard. Able to fight for a couple extra at the end. He gets nine. Back in the first half. Big moment of the night for this Carolina team was that. The injury to the hamstring of Christian McCaffrey. Uh, you just hope that he's going to be okay and not miss much time. You'd hate to see if. Can't imagine it's going to linger. Where he's not able to come back, but boy, when you see the stars of our game get injured and miss time, it's just not good. Play clock at four. Just get it away. Darnold gets hit. Pass is caught for the first down by Terrace Marshall Jr. 
And Darnold got hit right as he let it go. Great throw. Yeah, there's been pressure inside on Sam Darnold. This time, Dennis Daly, the left guard, he whiffs. And that, I mean, that's sometimes you get hit as a quarterback. It's not much. These are big time hits that he's wow. taken back there. I mean, the three guys that are hitting him. It looked like Marshall had enough for the first down, even when they placed the football down, but they're going to measure to make sure. He's got it. Well, last week I commented I, I really thought that Joe Brady called a nice game against the Saints in trying to protect Darnold because week one against the Jets they got after him pretty good. They hit him knocked him to the ground about a half a dozen times. There's a look at Joe Brady and so last week they kept people in and were able to protect him and do a lot of good things. Now they ran away with it. defense played great. They were smothered New Orleans offensively. But boy this offensive line has given up a lot of hits even when they haven't been bringing pressure with a four man rush they've gotten home. Freeman over the right side gets a couple. Second down and eight. Panthers had a touchdown last time they had it. First career scrimmage touch for Tommy Tremble, the rookie, took it in from seven yards out. Eight point game. Throws pass incomplete but a flag. Arnold was the target coverage by Eric Murray. Well they motioned Dan Arnold across so he, they knew they were in man coverage because Murray goes with pass interference defense number 23 ball is placed in the spot of the ball first down Carolina. Darnold knew what he had. Oh, they were one on one. So whatever matchup he liked the most, he liked Arnold on or Arnold on Murray. And Murray just gets there early and gets on him. I, I don't. I'm not sure that that Arnold's able to make the play, even if he doesn't get to him. First down at the Houston 41. Here's a toss to DJ Moore and saying hello <laughs> is Jacob Martin. He came off his block and Martin said DJ well you're all mine. He came off the block because it was Sam Darnold trying to block <laughs> him. I mean that's just good point. I, don't like, I didn't like that as soon as I saw what was happening. I was going to say he would have been laughed out of the meeting room tomorrow if, if Jacob Martin had allowed Sam Darnold to, to <laughs> make that block. Should be the last play of the quarter and it will be. Second down and 11 when we open quarter number four. 14 to six game. Thursday Night Football presented by Bud Light Platinum back after this. Well, Matt Rule wore a Texas High School Coaches Association. Good job, Troy. Thanks, buddy. A Texas High School Coaches Association hat during the pregame warm-ups earlier tonight. Still a member of the Texas High School Coaches Association. He said, I love high school football at all levels, and the THSCA was a big part of my career at Baylor. So a nice touch back here in Texas as Darnold throws. He's got the rookie and tremble is into deep Houston territory down to the 12 good for 30. Yeah too deep look and so they stress the corner right here and when he flattens out you've got a two on one on the safety it's two on one right here. So they've got Ian Thomas who's going down the middle he ties up the safety trembles up the right side and that's kind of the stuff that he's able to do you come in with two tight ends 
you're thinking more with everybody packed down in there you're going to maybe run the football but Tremble can run and so can Ian Thomas so they can stress a defense in a big play at 30 yard the biggest play of the ball game hand out to Hubbard and Chuba takes it down to the eight. Opening minutes, quarter number four, and the Panthers are in position, obviously, to make it a two-possession game, but they have loftier ambitions. Looking for the end zone. Second and six. Darnold Capes that pass got batted down I believe and it's incomplete big no. pressure by Grenard that's an outstanding job though really by Sam Darnold in knowing when you're coming to the blind side you really got to get turned around quick so he's anticipating that Grenard was going to get up the field and you have to be aware of that before the ball snapped you have to know how many times you see a quarterback roll right into that and not pay attention but Sam was anticipating it. And when Grenard gets up the field, he immediately retreats, and it, it looks like just an incompletion, but he just saved what could have been a really negative play. But now third and six. Quick throw, pass caught, and quick tackle. That's Marshall on the catch. Hargraves on the stop, and he's a yard short of a first down. Well, they went for it last time and they came up short. So the decision is do you want to go for it or kick the chip shot field goal and make it a two possession well, game? And they're going to go for I'm it. I'm surprised. I, I thought that Matt Rule would kick the field goal and make it a two possession game because I just haven't seen enough. And DJ Moore, he's he's hobbling off. So no more and no McCaffrey in timeout taken by Darnold. See what happened to DJ Moore. Timeout. Carolina. Their first 30 second timeout. And he really lost his footing going across. What you're saying is you haven't seen enough from this Houston offense and Davis Mills to say I'm not going to kick the field goal. I'm going to go for it here and now they might be changing their mind. Yeah, it looks like they are. I, I haven't seen enough except before the end of the half when they went into their hurry up. Now, if they were, if they make this two possession game, they're going to have to start picking some things up. And then that means spreading out Carolina defensively and letting him kind of do what he did there on that one drive when they look so good. They really haven't let him open it up, but they're about to be forced to do it. 21 yard try by Zane Gonzalez. And it is a 17 to 6 game. 11 point bulge here in Houston. With the exception of that drive right before the half, this Carolina defense doing what it's done. Through the first two weeks coming into this game all over the rookie quarterback second time this defense has faced a rookie quarterback as a starter over three games the other Zach Wilson into the end zone and a touchback for Gonzalez something they've been looking for and let's send it down to Christina Pink. Hey Joe well all the Texans players love David Cully and here's another example why I've witnessed so many of these conversations throughout the game. Here's him talking to Davis Mills just before the start of this drive telling his players stay with it keep doing it. You're going to have to see your the results pay off and uh, the players say that this is him all game every day and never wavers with all of this positive energy. Well now it's an 11 point game so more pressure on Mills to get the ball downfield. He does here and he completes to Cooks. Nice start to the drive gain of 13 for number 13. 
When he's had time in the pocket, he is he has really looked good. I mean, he looks the part. He's got good size. He's got good strength in his arm. A lot of good things. He's accurate with the football. But like you said, I mean, now you know, down 11 points and 12 minutes to play, they got to start kind of opening it up probably more than what they would have liked. But this is probably good for Davis Mills. The eighth quarterback taken in this past draft, and he finds Cooks yet again, and Cooks grabs his back after making that catch and then getting hit a gain of 15. That's a nice job by Cooks, just working back into the ball and being able to go down and make a play. You're, you know, he reaches for that back. You don't want to see that. If he hits him in stride, there was no underneath coverage at all. You get the ball in his hands with with a lot of field in front. No telling what might happen. Two wide receivers out there in Conley and Miller on first down. Mills dangerous throw and that was just defensed more than anything by Anthony Miller. That was a dangerous throw by a young quarterback who had a game at Washington State. In his time at Stanford, it set a record. And you look at some of the greats that played there. Best for Plunkett, 388. Best for Elway, 418. Best for Andrew Luck, and we miss him in this league at 423. And then Mills, 504 yards in a game at Washington State. Second and 10, pass caught. Crooks, first down. Well, the other part of that is the guy coaching him Pep Hamilton has been around the league a lot. He worked with Andrew Luck. There in Indianapolis and uh, he's working with Davis Mills. Here in Houston. Brandon Cooks with three first down catches on this possession. Mills. Off the right hand of the tight end Aikens. Just looks like a different different offense a different quarterback everything when they they pick up the tempo and kind of spread this defense out. J.C. Horn still out of the ball game. He was carted off. Lower leg injury. Rashawn Melvin out there for Carolina. Mills able to stay upright and complete it to Cooks. Hassan Reddick got through but could not bring down the rookie, and it's a five yard completion instead of a sack. Well, he came right up inside, too. They run a little game, he's free. Mills. Keeps his composure. You can see that he, he's keeping his eyes down the field. You always worry about a young quarterback if he starts looking at the rush. And he's had reason to do that because they've been able to get pressure on him a good part of the night. But he's keeping his eyes down the field, feeling the pressure. Reddick's right on top of him, and yet he still delivers a good ball. Mills gets hit and dumped by Reddick. That brings up fourth down and Davis Mills got hit hard. Well they kept in Aikens to help with the edge. It slows down Reddick and that's yeah that is a it, it's a wonder that Mills is getting up. Wow. Almost took his helmet off. I got hit like that as a rookie in Arizona. I was out for 10 minutes. I mean you're stepping up and you don't feel that at all and just a total shot right to the head. And a 53 yard try now at the end of that by Joey Sly. Good snap, good hold. The kick is good. And back to an eight point game. Missed an extra point early, but now drills it from 53. And the former Carolina Panther kicker has made it a one possession game by Bud Light Platinum. Back to an eight point game, 17 to 9.
Sly, who just hit from 53, knocks it out of the back of the end zone. We saw DJ Moore go to the sideline. Aaron, any more to add to that? Yeah, we see here Joe as he gets tangled up a bit. A kind of mystery what happened to him. He went over on the bike trying to loosen it up, sat over on the sideline with a heating pad. You see him there with head athletic trader Kevin King, but he is good to go. And as you guys know, Panthers need some good news on the injury front after the losing Christian McCaffrey and J.C. Horn tonight. No doubt about it. So he's out there in the huddle and ready to go. That's a good thing. I mean, you're already without Christian McCaffrey like you said and then if you lose him I mean heck there goes your offense DJ Moore having a heck of a night handoff to Chuba Hubbard fourth round pick from Oklahoma State for four you look at this this offense and what they've been able to do here in this second half they've been able to put some drives together and for Sam Darnold you, know, you look up and he's had a pretty efficient night. He's put the ball on the ground a couple of times, but he hasn't lost those. And, and those, you know, weren't because of him being careless in the pocket, just under pressure and the ball getting knocked out as he's throwing. But he hasn't had the big mistake in a game where the defenses have been battling to give an offense that has struggled for Houston a short field. No turnovers either side in the game. Here's Anderson, not much of a factor in the game. Making a catch and a run for a first down. I think overall when you come into a game and when I was playing you, you, the defense would try to hold an opponent to 17 points. That was kind of the number. And now it seems like it's more around 20 21 points and you do that in today's game with the offense's ability to score. You know you should be able to win a, a lot of games but you know, Lovey Smith in getting this defense turned around they've had a good showing overall here's Hubbard trying the right side shows off some of that speed picks up 12 and another Carolina first down now that looked like last year's version of defense not being able to stop anybody on the ground and just not getting off blocks getting in your gaps Pretty good game there. Longest of the rookie season so far, the young year for Hubbard. 12 yards and a first down at the 49. We're ready. One left. Freeman bottled up at the line of scrimmage. Kirksey in the middle of it for Houston. Under seven to go. You know, we did a call with Lovey. I, I didn't realize he was support or sporting that that beard. Oh, he's but had that, it. I mean, he had it at, at Illinois. Yeah, that tells you how many games I saw of Illinois. <laughs> oh, a shot fired. <laughs> but not a shot. I just I just wasn't watching Illinois, were you? You know, oh, no. Just... <laughs> There's his boy Miles, and Miles is his linebackers coach with Houston and they, those two are loving every minute of this Darnold fires out of the reach of Moore and what has been a big night could have been made even bigger they connected here wide open pretty much yeah DJ Moore when he was going through the middle of that defense I mean he, he knew he had a shot I was waiting for him to throw his hand up and say hey here I am because he knows he's got an angle and just off his fingertips. Eight catches for 126 yards. That's the 12th time he's been targeted. Well, I think if Houston's going to have any chance in this game, they got to make a stop here. Third down and 10. Darnold underneath pass is caught and a first down for Dan Arnold. Gets 11 yards, and that is a big conversion for Carolina. I really like Dan Arnold. I, I think it was such a good pickup for Carolina to get a tight end with his ability. He has such a great feel for how to get open, how to run the seam route, and, and where the holes are within the zone. He's very quarterback friendly, and he's got outstanding hands. And when you have a guy like that, 
and you combine them with a, with a DJ Moore and then Robbie Anderson who we already have a feel with Christian McCaffrey who knows his status but you start being able to attack people in any kind of way. Play action here. Darnold pass caught the rookie Marshall and Terrace has a first down inside the 20 and we're seeing some good throws out of Sam Darnold that one miss on the deep one to Moore but he's been on the mark here for the majority of the game. Yeah he has and I, I like Terrace Marshall as a young wide receiver he does a lot in the run game he's not afraid to get in there and block and he's got good size and he runs extremely well and better than all that is Joe Brady very familiar with him as a young guy coming from LSU so he knows how to use him and what he does well. Darnold has completed six passes in this game of 20 or more yards. Freeman gets a yard and a half. Cunningham with the stop next week on Thursday Night Football Trevor Lawrence and the Jaguars take on Joe Burrow and the Bengals battle between number one picks Thursday Night Football next Thursday at eight only on NFL Network. Timeout taken here by Houston with four and a half to go second and eight. But what comes between this game and that game next Thursday is the game we have on Sunday which is going to be just a treat and about as good as it can get not just in the NFC maybe across the NFL with Tom Brady and the Bucks Matthew Stafford and the Rams and that beautiful young stadium SoFi Stadium America's game of the week 2 and 0 meets 2 and 0 this Sunday at 4 Eastern you know here we are in in week three in you know as we take a look at these quarterbacks and the starts that they're off to this year really good stuff it's rare that you have a matchup this early in the season that's just as much must see TV but this is one of them here is Hubbard left side out of bounds inside the five to set up first and goal for Carolina as they look to put this one away Attempting to start 3 0 for the first time since 2015 when they went to Super Bowl 50. Well, Chuba Hubbard, he was a three year starter at Oklahoma State, and, you know, they really like him. And there's, there's things that when you are a coach in college and you come into the NFL, you've got a, a much better feel for the college athlete and a lot of these players around the country. And Rule certainly knew, knew, know, knows Hubbard. But it's just a matter of him earning the coach's trust. They were going for him there. And the pass incomplete, second and goal. And now, because of the injury to McCaffrey, you know, he gets a chance to kind of earn that trust because he has to play. And they've been rotating with him and Freeman. But he was highly productive at Oklahoma State in a nice one two punch if you're able to get McCaffrey back on the field. He was open there, but just missed. Freeman didn't get it held just short of the end zone third and goal coming up hey, what John Miller comes off the ball and thought okay. maybe they had a chance at it's helmet to helmet was Zach Cunningham Zach Cunningham he's had a big night 12 tackles in this game. Timeout taken by Houston. They're left with one before third down and goal. Hubbard comes back in. Carolina Panthers have not been to the postseason since the 2017 season. We are a long way from that but at the beginning of this rebuilding program put in by Matt Rule they're knocking on the door of a three and start and Darnold playing really well with a good defense pretty good combination Darnold takes it and 
Newton is in for the touchdown. With a little bit of help from his friends. Shoved from behind and able to plow it in and the helmetless Sam Darnold has his second of the game. Yeah they better check him. He, he'll be seeing a chiropractor tomorrow. I mean you get a good look at it right here right over the top of it and everybody rushes in there big scrum everybody just starts pushing bodies and helmets in the back and telling what all's happening at the bottom of that pile. He definitely got in helmet comes off. That's why we didn't run the quarterback sneak. I wasn't tough enough. <laughs> Richie pushes him in. You just hold on for dear life. You know, you just don't know where you're going to end up. Extra point is good. And the Carolina Panthers open up their lead 24 to 9. As Darnold trades in his helmet for his second rushing touchdown of the game. Carolina on their way. Carolina opening up a 15 point lead. Sam Darnold, a pretty good night. Another 300 yard passing game, 23 of 34, two rushing touchdowns. Here's a return by Roberts. Spun down after crossing the 35 by Brandon Zilstra. Time for tonight's next gen stats powered by AWS. And we look at this defense and their blitz rate. They came after the rookie quarterback. So far, they've added four more sacks. They have 14 sacks as a defense here early in the year. They definitely have guys that can get after the quarterback. I'm impressed with the young rookie. He got harassed pretty good. He's been hit hard the last time he got hit. For him to still be playing is something. Completes two Aikens, and Jordan has 11, maybe 12, and a first down. Yeah, so here they go, and. Blitz coming. They add to their numbers. Ball comes out. And they're going to say that's an incomplete pass. Shaq Thompson got an there. And the ball just came out of that pile of bodies, and it's an incompletion. Yeah, saying here they go, and then here comes Carolina. I mean, Shaq Thompson, he's able to get right past Justin Britt and straight shot. There's Whoa. been too many of those. That ball's out. This. That's definitely out. It was out. It's out again. It's out again. It was, by the way, when that ball it went down as an incompletion, it was recovered by Marcus Cannon anyway. But now it's going to be third down as that snap was low and Mills couldn't corral it a loss of six. Well, right now, you, you, you just have to be smart. If you're Tim Kelly or David Cauley, and and protect this young quarterback. It's his first start. They're teeing off on him. The line is not able to keep him off of him. Mills, Akins, not much. Fourth down, gain of five. Coming up on three minutes left. Well, this game, I think Houston defensively, they they did about all they could there in that first half, and and. And kept a minute, but you know, really, you know, 24 9 right now, this game really is, is, has not been that close. I mean, Carolina just did not execute at times when they could have. But they've taken, they've run away with it here in the second half. Timeout by Carolina. Timeout. Carolina. As Davis Mills, who's been under pressure all night was lining up for a fourth down and 11. They have come after this kid from the beginning and I'm going to say it again. You've been saying it all night. He looks the part. He's been impressive. He's shown his toughness. There's a lot to like about Davis Mills. Yeah I think so. I mean I think he's had a good showing and I mean, we're in a time. I mean I'm hearing people comment on Zach Wilson and Trevor Lawrence as to whether or not they're any good. I, I, I don't get it. I mean I just don't understand it. There's a lot to learn, even though there is some carryover from college to the NFL, but it takes some time. 
to see all the different things. There's a lot of good coaches in this league and a lot of really good players. And for Davis Mills tonight, you know, for him to come in on a short week and not have any live reps to speak of is all walkthroughs because of the short turnaround. And I thought that, you know, when he's had, he, had, he just hasn't had much time. When he's had time in the pocket, he's made good throws. Time runs out here. He throws. Cooks is not going to get it. Nice strong tackle made by Dante Jackson. Carolina will take over with two and a half to go. And it's a good thing that they've got an extended break over the weekend because Davis Mills, I mean, he takes another shot right to the face as soon as he gets done oh. with this. And he's back on the ground as he's trying to find somebody. And he's taking way too many hits. That's nine hits. And these these have not been garden variety hits. There have been some big ones on Mills. Well, he just a, keeps getting up. Yep, he sure does. And, you know, for Carolina, they, they travel to Dallas next weekend. Be a pretty good matchup. And uh, last Play week, up. they played a Saints team that had been decimated. A lot of injured players, a lot of coaches unable to coach in that game. So they, they played well. I'm not saying, not taking that away from them, but that wasn't the Saints that that we saw week one. And they get a they get a good test against Dallas, what what I think is a pretty good football team next week. But they'll go into that one three and oh. It'll be second down and three as Houston spends their final time out and uh, maybe the final time tonight to say hello to you from the broadcast <laughs> booth. Joe Buck and Troy Aikman and uh, you know Carolina's on their way as you just said to three and oh and there's a lot to like about this team but while they go to three and oh they're going to come out of this game flying home thinking about how serious is the injury to Christian McCaffrey how serious is the injury to J.C. Horn this was a painful night along those lines for the Panthers it sure was here's a carry by Chuba Hubbard he's looked good for a first down yeah he has you know this is a guy back in 2019 he had over 2,000 yards from scrimmage. So, I mean, this guy, he, he has production. And now, unfortunately, it looks like they're going to be relying on him at least for a few games. Two minutes left in the ball game, and we'll look ahead to big games coming up this weekend. This is the start to week three. How about this matchup Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs coming off a loss against Justin Herbert coming off a home loss to the Cowboys and the Chargers. That's early on CBS. We can't wait for the Buccaneers and the Rams late on Fox on Sunday. Aaron Rodgers and the Packers coming off a big night offensively at home and the win over Detroit against the 49ers on Sunday night and the Eagles and Cowboys on Monday night on ESPN. Good matchup there. Yeah, we got a big night Monday night in Dallas. Not only are the Cowboys hosting the Eagles, but we got Jimmy Johnson and Drew Pearson and Cliff Harris all receiving their Hall of Fame rings. So I'll be there for that. A lot of others. The other former Cowboys that are in the Hall of Fame. It'll be an electric crowd there at AT&T Stadium. And an important game. And yeah. Yeah, an important game. An important divisional game between those two. So two minutes left first down and Carolina in the old victory formation ready to take a knee. Coming up after the ball game is officially over the Mercedes EQ postgame show. Plenty to talk about in this game and, and just if you would assess what you've seen from that guy Sam Darnold well, that's with, what, with this uh, three game run here. Yeah that's what I was going to say. I mean you look up and you say wow he's what a night. I mean he's 23 of 34 for over 300 yards no interceptions and you know but I think that's the good thing that overall I, I don't know that you watch this game and you just walked away blown away by you know how well Sam Darnold played but that's a good thing that he was able to come out and and do what he did and put up the, the game that he had and win this football game. He, you know, they're going to be relying on him even more as they move through this season. But this is a good start for him, and it only builds the confidence of this football team. Start 3-0, and and like I said, they, they got probably their best test of the season 
uh, coming up at least through the first month of the of this year their biggest test is coming up at Dallas next week. And one more snap and that'll do it. Three and oh starts in team history that goes back to the mid 90s. That 1996 team that lost in the NFC championship game. They ended up 12 and four in 02. They missed the postseason were under 500 and then got to the Super Bowl the next two times and Matt rule in year two has got his Panthers at three and oh David Culley in his first year as his Texans at one and two. So the Panthers win it and a final of twenty four to nine. Stay tuned for the Mercedes EQ postgame show coming up next for Richie Zients, Rich Russo, for Troy and Christina and Aaron. I'm Joe. Thanks for watching Thursday Night Football presented by Bud Light Platinum.